everyone, I'm Kelly. I'm the editorial director of HGTV.com, a master gardener and the author of a book about vegetable gardening. In our social series called Dig It, I'm answering your vegetable gardening questions. The season is really kicking into high gear, so let's just dig in. First, we have a question from Debbie about broccoli. She says, we tried broccoli this year and we may get a small harvest, but how do you keep the pests off your broccoli leaves? Our leaves are mostly skeletons. Broccoli can be a little bit tricky to grow, mostly because of temperature and timing. I live in zone seven and I have had the best luck with broccoli in the spring. Broccoli really needs to stay within the temperatures of about 40 degrees or 70 to 75 degrees. If it gets a lot lower, a lot higher than that, that's where you have a lot of problems. Like most plants in the cabbage family, broccoli can have a lot of issues with insect pests, especially cabbage worms. You can help deter cabbage moths that become cabbage worms by planting fragrant herbs like thyme and chamomile near your broccoli. If you still have issues, you can use an organic insecticide called BT that focuses on worms and caterpillars. It's very safe, it's effective, just make sure you apply according to the package directions. Here's a question about potatoes. Michelle asked, where do you plant your potatoes? I've seen potato grow bags, but didn't know if they were a good idea or not. I've grown potatoes a lot of different ways, including in the ground and in containers, but my favorite way to grow them is in the fabric potato grow bags. They're made out of a breathable fabric, they're easy to move around, and they're easy to store in the winter when you're not using them. You can even grow in the potato grow bags if you don't have a garden. When you plant potatoes, use certified seed potatoes with the eyes starting to sprout. You can plant small potatoes whole, or if you have larger ones, you're gonna to wanna to cut those up and plant them individually. But make sure that each piece has one eye already starting to sprout. When you cut those potatoes, you wanna let them dry out for a day or so before you actually plant them, which will help you avoid them rotting. You'll plant your potato pieces about three inches below the soil with the eye pointing up. Floyd has a question about radishes and he asks, what are your favorite radish varieties to grow? I love growing radishes in both spring and fall. They're so easy to grow and they taste so much better than radishes that you get at the grocery. One of my favorite varieties is called French breakfast radish. It's a mild pinky red oblong shaped radish that you harvest at about one to two inches long. Another radish I love is called watermelon radish and it's green on the outside, but bright pink on the inside, just like a watermelon. Watermelon radishes are large and round and you harvest them when they're two to three inches in diameter. Now I wanna show you a project I worked on this spring to freshen up our raised beds. Wooden raised beds can be great to grow in because you get really deep, great soil, but they can look a little dingy after a couple seasons. Our cedar raised beds were starting to fade, so I wanted to brighten them up with paint or stain. I found a non-toxic stain that's made from whey. It's a byproduct of cheese making. I chose a moss green that still looks really natural. The stain was easy to apply and just two coats did the trick. Then I surrounded the beds with fresh mulch and now they look as good as new. Okay, that's it for this episode of Dig It. What other vegetable gardening questions do you have? Ask them down in the comments and I may answer your question next time. Happy gardening.